back again. We're talking today about sheer flow again. We have, I think, I think one of the hardest problems in all solids, these built up member problems. They're not particularly hard, but they're hard to get your brain wrapped around. And just like we've talked about in the last couple videos, what the heck is Q? It's so confusing. So hopefully I can cl clear this up for you. Okay, the goal here is to, to find the spacing for the nails at point A and B. Okay, here's point B, here's point A. The pink things are the nails, okay? So these, these pink things here, if you look at our beam, just kind of go along the beam as we go across the beam, okay? And what they want to know is what is what is the spacing between those nails? So I have some on the face of the beam, which would be like that guy, and some on the top of the beam, which you can't see up there, okay? This is a cross-section view. So if you took this beam and sliced it somewhere, that's what you would see. So there's four boards nailed together to make a square box with a hollow middle that runs along that beam there, okay? Now we're gonna use our shear flow equations that we derived last time. We've got the Vicky equation, little q, right, equals VQ over I, and then we've got Q equals, Q of course is shear flow, which is a force per distance. So it's along those shear planes like we talked about before, and it's the force divided by the distance, which is spacing between those fasteners or whatever you've got there. And the last equation that we're gonna employ is there's Q, right? That's the one we're like, oh, I'm worried about that guy. It's Y times A, okay? So let's see if we can do this. Let's see for can we do it, okay? I got you, we can do this, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do is, you know, if I'm gonna use my VQ over I equation, first thing I wanna do is, what the heck is V? Okay, the shear force, is it 150? You know, the best thing to do, it would be just to um, draw a shear on my diagram real quick. Let's just draw the shear diagram, okay? This is an easy one, right? Eight feet, eight feet, 150 pounds. So it's like a, a fat kid sitting right in the middle of the picnic bench. You got half his weight over there, half his weight over there, right? So what I have is 75 pounds there and 75 pounds there, okay? 150 pounds, that's not a fat kid, that's a skinny kid. That's, that's way skinnier than me, I'm the fat kid. Okay, here we go. All right. So what does this look like? Okay, here's my V diagram. I'm gonna go up 75, whoop. And then no change, no change, no change, bam. I'm gonna go down 150, okay. And then no change, no change, no change, and then bam, over here back up 75. So this is 75, this is 75, okay? So what is the shear force on that beam? No matter where you are, the shear force is 75 pounds, okay? So V equals 75 pounds. Let's do the next easy thing. The e I like the easy stuff. The easy thing would be to figure out what is I for that beam right there, okay? So I, is the moment of inertia, the second area moment of inertia. Okay, and I think on this one, right, the neutral axis of bending is here. Okay, we'll call that the neutral axis or the centroidal axis, whatever you wanna call it. We don't have to figure it out, it's a symmetric beam, we know it's right in the middle, okay? And let's see, how about for that outer square, right? minus inner square, and that'll give us our um, moment of inertia. So that's 1 12th. The outer, the base is 10. The height is 10 cubed, uh, minus the inner, 1 12th. And remember, we don't have to use the parallel axis theorem because the centroid of the whole thing is on the neutral axis of the whole thing, and so the parallel axis theorem, our D in the parallel axis theorem would be zero. So minus the inner, let's see, let's see, this is, uh, if that's two and that's two, that's four off of, what, 10, which means that this is six, 
right? And that this is 6. Okay? So the base, 6. The height, 6. Okay, so what is that? All right? Hold, please, and I'll calculate that. All right. 10 to the 4th um, equals divided by 12 minus, minus, not divided by, minus 6 to the 4th. Um, divided by 12, which is equal to 725.33. What? Inches to the fourth, right? That's inches, that's inches cubed, and so the units here are inches to the fourth. Okay, so I is 725.33 inches to the fourth. All right, we got another thing, okay? Now that should be old hat for us. We should know how to calculate I all day long, okay? Okay, so here's the deal. Now they gave us a little bit of information here. They told us that these nails, right, in shear, as I shear down that, that, that uh, uh, I guess, that joint, that those nails can only support 50 pounds each as a shear force. You go over 50 pounds, you shear the nails off, and uh, it's no good. So the next thing I've got to do, this is probably, uh, this is where it's going, I'm going to, uh, this is going to blow your mind. Okay, here we go. Come on, y'all. Stay with me. i got to come up with a Q, and i got to come up with a Q for A, and i got to come up with a Q for B, okay? Let's do B first. Okay, so the way I like to think about this is this. I, okay, one of the things, that, the best way to, that I know to explain this is that when you calculate Q, when you calculate Q, these, these shear planes must be symmetrical, okay? What does that mean? That means here, if well, I want to make I want to make nail B fail because I want to try and tell what the spacing of nail B is. So I've got to fail that across there, okay? And what I mean by the shear planes must be symmetrical is, if I'm going to shear through a horizontal plane on this, on this side of the beam, I need to shear through a horizontal plane on that side of the beam. So I'm going to shear through right there, okay? Which means that my Q area is this here, is the whole top area of the beam, this whole business up here. And the way you have to think about this is I have a shear plane here at B, I've got another shear plane over there, and I've got to assume that the fibers of the wood are at least as strong as the nails are, okay? So when I shear this, what that's going to happen, that shear flow is going to cause the whole top of that to kind of tear away. I like to think of that as this area here would just tear away. It would just shear off, right? And so I know I've got a nail over here. I don't have a nail over there, but I have to assume that that wood over there is at least as strong as the nails would be. So it's almost like I'm assuming that there's another set of nails over here that's nailing it down there, and that's how I have to treat that, okay? That's a little bit confusing. Now, I'm going to put a dot here in the middle of that area. Because for QB, right, which is that square up there, what's the equation for that? Well, it's, it's Y times A. And where is Y in the Q equation? Where is it always referenced from? Always. The neutral axis, okay? So what we're looking for is this distance right there. That's what we want, okay? That, well, let's don't put a D there. Let's put a Y there. That's the little y bar that we're looking for, okay? So Q for part B is y bar times A. Well, A is easy, right? It's uh, what? 10 inches by 2 inches, right? 10 inches by 2 inches times y bar. So how far is it from here to the dot? Well, if it's 10, I know from there to the outside of the part is 5. And then if I come back 
half of that two inch bar up there, which is one inch. Five minus one puts me, that dot is at four, isn't it? Okay. 10 times two is 20 times four, that's 80. And what is that? Inches, inches, inches. So that's inches cubed. It's not a volume, okay? Don't be, don't be fooled for that trick, okay? Oh, there comes QA. What in the world is QA gonna be? Okay. Um, QA, again. I have to shear through those nails over there at point A. I want those nails to fail, okay? Because that's what I'm testing. What's the spacing so that those nails don't fail at A, okay? So here's, here's the plane at A right there, okay? A vertical plane. So on the other side of the beam, I mean, what, what would you say? What would you say Q is if you looked at it right now? Do you have an idea? Most of my students today said, oh, it would just shear this whole sideboard off there. No, because Q would be zero there, right? Because like where's, where's Y bar for that whole side piece to shear off, right? At, in the middle. So Y bar would be zero, so Q would be zero. That's not right, okay? It still has to be up there on that top board. But again, the shear planes must be symmetric. So I sheared through a nail in the vertical plane so same thing, I'm going to assume that when I shear through that same plane on the other side, that these wood fibers over here can hold at least as much as those nails can on the other side. And so basically, again, what I'm assuming is, is there's another row of nails over there or something that can hold at least as much as the nails can on the other side. So Q for point A is this right here. Okay, that's Q for point A. It's just the middle part of that top of that beam. That is super confusing. I think just identifying what is Q is the hardest part. And I hope this helps. The shear planes have to be symmetrical. So if you shear on one side vertical, the other side has to be vertical. If you shear one side horizontal, the other side has to be horizontal, okay? So what is Q for that guy? That middle section of the beam there. Well, that's, uh, I don't know, six times two, all right, six inches times two inches. And guess what? Y bar, Y bar is the same, isn't it? Still four inches. Two times four is eight times six is 48, okay? Okay, so now I have V, I have I, I have Q for A, I have Q for B, right? I think we can find the shear flow at A and the shear flow at B by using uh, this equation here, right? Let's do that right quick. So Q for point A is, let's see, VQ over I. So I've got 75 pounds, right, times Q A, which is 48 inches cubed, divided by I, 725.33 inches to the fourth. And look here, the inches cubed and all those go away and leave me with pounds per inch, which that's the unit of force over distance of little q, isn't it? Okay. And then QB, same equation is equal to 80. Well, shoot, inches cubed, went backwards, didn't I? Times 75 pounds. This one isn't VQ, it's QV, oh my gosh, over 725.33 inches to the fourth, okay? So let's see, QA and QB are equal to, let's see what we get, handy dandy calculator here. Okay, so QA is 75 times 48 divided by 725.33 is uh, 4.96, okay? QA, 4.96, what? Pounds per inch, right? And then QB is 80 times 75 equals, divided by 725.33 equals 8.27.
Okay, so we found the shear flow at joint A and at joint B. So we're done with the question, right? No, they want to know what the spacing of the nails is. So we got one more step to go. And that's this guy here. We're going to use this equation here, right? Because S is the spacing of the nails. That's what we're after, okay? So let's see if we can do that. So QA is equal to F over S, right? So QA, what is QA? 4.96 pounds per inch is equal to S. What is F? Okay? The force, the sheer force of the nails, that was given. That's right down there, isn't it? Nails can only support 50 pounds each. Here's where the mistake usually comes, though. How many nails do I have to shear through? Well, at point A, I got one here, but remember I had another assumed nail that I put in there, whoop, right through there. And so I've got to not only shear through that side, but I have to shear through that side, right? And so what I have to do there is I have to say, you're 50 and you're 50, right? So I've got to do two times 50 pounds, okay? And so in this case, S for nails at A is equal to 100 divided by 4.96 equals 20.16, okay? So for that load on that beam, which is kind of a big beam, right? You only need to put a nail at A, right? Where's A? A is here. So the horizontal ones, you only need to put a nail every 20 inches, okay? Every 20 inches, 20.16 inches. Let's do QB. QB is equal to F over S, right? So that's QB was uh, 8. 0.27 pounds per inch is equal to, again, what is F, okay? I had a nail here, but I had an assumed second nail over there, right? Because I got to tear through both sides. So I'm going to put 2 times 50 there again over S. And so SB is equal to, here we go, 100 divided by 8.27, 12.09. Okay, so I need for B, which is this location, which is along the top edge of the beam, right? I need to put a nail every 12.09 inches to support that load. That's the minimum spacing. I could put it closer together for a little factor of safety, but that's the minimum. Okay. I hope that made sense, because I know that the hardest part about this is what the heck do I pick for my Q areas? That is the absolute hardest part. And this down here, put two stars by that. That's I think that's critical that you're that you have to remember that those shear planes have to be symmetric, okay? Gosh, I hope this helps, and I'll see you on the next video.